Warning, this video contains material that some viewers may find disturbing. All original source material is in the description below. Viewer discretion advised. When you purify HIV, there are some challenges because the contam it's contaminated with cellular debris. But I said. And particles that look like retroviruses but are not infected. Yes, but I said. How do you distinguish between what is infective and what isn't? You cannot. It's very easy to get people to think the right thing if you get the right on the tablet the first time. But once something's on the tablet and you gotta erase it and put something else, it's very hard to get people to think differently. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. This video is sponsored by you, the viewer. I've had a sponsor before. I didn't like it, so I'm not sponsored, nor am I monetized anywhere. So anything I do make, comes from you so if you like what I do and you want to support the cause you can shoot me a tip or support to my PayPal Venmo cash app below or you can join my patreon or check out my merch store since HIV has never been isolated or purified that also means that it's never been proven to exist let alone cause any kind of disease. In science, certain rules must be followed for any agent to be considered a causative factor in disease. The first rule is that an agent that is going to be blamed for a disease should be able to be isolated from each and every case of the disease. That is not true in HIV and AIDS. Nobody can find free infectious HIV virus in a human being. That is why they have to resort to looking for antibodies to HIV in a person. That is one of the biggest flaws in the HIV hypothesis, that antibodies, which are a sign of immunity, you should be happy that you have antibodies. It means that you are now immune. And yet with, with AIDS, we have antibodies as a predictor or an indicator of AIDS and future death. HIV has never been proven to exist because it's neither been purified nor isolated. Orthodoxy has given the name HIV to certain stretches of genetic material, but the so-called retrovirus HIV has never been obtained directly from a person's blood. There is no way to test for HIV. This is because all the tests are based on indirect markers, none of which has been validated by proving that the markers are positive only when the virus is present. I really would like to see the electron microscopic data of this, and apparently there is none. There is none where you've done a rigorous isolation protocol. If one goes through the, all the HIV literature which exists to date, I think one will find it bold and incredible to still believe that there is proof for the existence of HIV. When a particle looks like a retrovirus, you have to isolate it, then put it in another culture, show that the cells in the secondary culture produce particles exactly like the particles from which they originated. That the two particles from the two cultures are exactly the same can be shown only by determining their constituent proteins in RNA. So isolation is extremely important to prove that the particle is a retrovirus. Where is the original paper that isolated HIV so that nothing else was present and they actually could go and find what the proteins were and the nucleic acids were? Uh, I think you won't find that paper because it hasn't been published yet. I've never seen a clear demonstration I mean, a, of, a, of a direct isolation of HIV from patients. There is no published uh, picture of HIV from a human sample, from a blood sample, a tissue sample. You can't find HIV in humans. Now, Dr. Gallo and Dr. Fauci talked a lot about isolation and purification. Can you tell me what the difference is between the two? Isolation, what was it? Isolation and purification. Of the virus? Yes. Well, you isolate a virus by um, um, finding the virus which causes a disease. And you purify a virus by making a lot of, I mean, just by purifying it so you get a pure virus. Okay. I don't, I don't understand what the well, they, they issue. Well, they, they interchanged the two, and I wasn't sure I see. If, it, if it was the same thing or if it was two totally different. Uh, well, it depends on how they used it. Okay. 
Can, can you explain the process of HIV isolation? Well, I didn't Dr. Gallo do that? I mean, he actually isolated it, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why should I do all of this? This is all textbook stuff you're asking me. I'm not quite sure what's behind your question about isolation. I don't want to be your textbook, you know? Okay. I got other things to do. So Dr. Baltimore is the one who discovered reverse transcriptase. And they used to think that retroviruses were the only things that reverse transcribed. That's actually how they got their name. Retrovirus. Reverse transcriptase virus. And pretty soon, they found out that reverse transcriptase wasn't specific to retroviruses. And they weren't looking for it anymore. Well, in the early 80s, they ignored that fact. And they saw reverse transcriptase activities... And since they saw that, that's how they, quote, isolated HIV. But they never isolated because HIV isn't the only thing that reverse transcribes. And they knew that. They will get their tissue culture where this HIV is supposed to be growing. And they'll check it for reverse transcriptase, which is an enzyme that was supposed to be specific or only exclusively found in retroviruses. And if they find reverse transcriptase in the tissue culture, they say, aha, we have now isolated HIV. What's so special about reverse transcription? Anytime you're searching for a new agent, you want to have some simple measurement of the presence of that agent. Um, in times past, you would put it on cells, cell culture in the laboratory, and suddenly these beautiful cells will all start turning into dead cells. You say, oh, something's there. And then you put that into an electron microscope and look and you can find it. All those are rather difficult things to use. If there's something that the virus produces in this culture, you don't necessarily have to see all the dead stuff. You just can have, take off some of the liquid it's growing in and test it. Um, and one thing you can test for a retrovirus is reverse transcriptase. And it just happens to be that's a laboratory test available for it. So you just take a little bit off, put it into a chemical assay, and you can do it very, very simply. So it's a matter of something that you can put a lot of specimens through and something that's simple to do so you can really uh, uh, get a, maybe not a direct picture of the virus, you can't see it, but you can get evidence that it is there, like fingerprints. Reverse transcriptase can be found in any number of different places. Normal cells contain reverse transcriptase, and under certain conditions, they will reverse transcribe RNA into DNA. We know what is reverse transcription. That's the repair of uh, mechanism of the ends of the chromosomes. Yeah? And uh, therefore, we have high activity in cancer cells or Montagnier embryonic cells. But Montagnier never said that he found the, the virus of, of, of AIDS. He said this could be a probably an effect and uh, to be carefully studied. The cells of people with leukemia have also been shown to have reverse transcriptase activity and why this is important is that every HIV culture starting with Robert Gallo were co-cultured with leukemia tissue. You couldn't just take the blood from somebody with AIDS and culture it in the tissue culture all by itself because nothing would grow. They couldn't find any HIV that way. So they had to co-culture it with cancer cells or tissue from people with leukemia. The only way to say that the existence of reverse transcriptase or the detection of reverse transcriptase activity proves the retrovirus was there is only if reverse transcription was specific to retroviruses, which is not the case. In fact, the Today, nearly everybody accepts that reverse transcription or reverse transcription activity is non-specific to retroviruses. In fact, at present, everybody accepts that reverse transcript transcription is present in all normal cells. The reverse transcription activity is the key, the key enzyme, uh, which is at well, that time was only associated with retroviruses. Montagnier put the Bruce cells in a culture into culture, he added different growth factors, including PHA. And after 15 days, he detected reverse transcriptase activity. However, PHA by itself in normal cell, and this was known by Baresinusi, the principal author, 
and Gallo proved it at the beginning of the 1970s that the PH itself causes reverse transcription in normal cells. So he put something in the cell which was causing a reverse transcription, and yet he said that this proves the existence of a, of a retrovirus there. So you're saying that what they found might just be the actual substance they put in the culture and not a virus. Definitely. But in all my interviews with scientists, they all say that reverse transcription is unique to retroviruses and that's how they knew that there was a virus in their culture. If you don't believe me, go and ask Baltimore or Vermus, and I'm sure they will confirm that reverse transcriptase activity is a characteristic of retroviruses, but it's not specific to them. What do you mean when you say reverse transcription is a characteristic of retroviruses, but not specific? Oh, well, let me give you an example. Hair is a characteristic of humans. You know, black, white, or yellow, we all have hair, but it's not specific because there are many animals, for example, cats, dogs, which also have hair. And finding a hair in a room, it doesn't mean that a human being was there, or a cat or a dog. Are retroviruses the only ones that can reverse transcribe? Ah, uh, no. There are other forms of reverse transcription that are used in various, um, various ways inside the cell. For instance, the ends of chromosomes are made by a reverse transcription process. That's how they're maintained stable. The, um, there is reverse transcription in the inheritance of all of our cells, which comes about from endogenous genetic elements in the cells or in the cells of our ancestors. Because once that information gets into our, into our cells, into our genomes, it stays there forever. Um, so it could be that we've inherited information from monkeys or from other animals that are, that are in our, our uh, lineage. Um, and so, no, reverse transcription is actually very widespread. Something like 50% of the DNA in our cells comes about by reverse transcription. The problem is that they detected non, they didn't, they detected non-specific phenomena. Reverse transcription, particles, and we've seen all the problems with particles, and antigen antibody reactions. And so you can't take a whole lot of things that might be something and turn them into that something. That's the problem. You, if, I mean, if you're walking down the, if you w walk into a, an empty space and you find an engine block and a, a fan belt and a, and a generator lying on the ground, what do you say you've got? Do you know what you've got? I mean, is that a, is that a, is that a car? Is, is it, could it be a boat? Could it be a plane? Could it be something someone uses on a farm to lift grain up? It could be all those things. You can't, you, you can't make something specific out of a whole lot of things that are non-specific. So they didn't, they used a whole lot of non-specific and just preferred to believe that this is what they'd found. Well, what's the purpose of the purification then? Well, to, uh, to make sure uh, uh, you have a, a real virus, uh, you know. Uh. So he'll admit that, but then about 10 years earlier, he admitted they never did it. In October 1997, Continuum published an interview with Professor Luc Montagnier, who first claimed to have discovered HIV. His team had not been able to purify HIV. Well, of course, we looked for it. We saw some particles, but they didn't have the morphology of retroviruses. He later said... I repeat, we did not purify. It was startling that Professor Montaigne decided to acknowledge in his interview with Jamel Tahi and continue that as far back as 1983, his team were not able to purify anything that you might call HIV, despite what he termed a, a, a Roman effort. So even though Montaigne admitted that they never purified, Fauci took that to be proof. In 2009, documentarian Brent Leung persuaded Dr. Fauci to submit to a sit-down interview for Leung's feature-length film on the history of AIDS, House of Numbers, Anatomy of an Epidemic. Leung asked an uncomfortable, chafing Dr. Fauci for his best evidence linking HIV to immune deficiency disease. With two decades and $10 billion to prepare his answer, Dr. Fauci's best explanation was the classic Fauci soft shoe.
Contemporary Americans will recognize the familiar refrain of double-talking and dissembling that we all now recognize from the NIAID director's COVID-19 interviews. He said, When you put the combined findings of the initial characterization as a distinct retrovirus isolated by Montagnier and his group, together with Gallo linking the virus to being the cause of AIDS, and they put those things together, and that's how we have a confirmation of the causative agent of, a, of, of AIDS, namely HIV. Translating all that into regular English, which Charles Ortleb remarked to me with a laugh, takes just three words. Gallo says so. That's what Fauci calls a confirmation. When I said 50 percent, I'm saying 50 percent of the DNA came about by reverse transcription. But it's not all retroviruses. Lots of it is just uh, repeated elements that are there as what we generally consider to be um, parasitic DNA. DNA, which is, as other people call it, selfish DNA. DNA, which is in there because it's able to copy itself and reintegrate itself in other places. And this is something that's going on all the time. Anyway, this is a very complicated subject. It's not really. They make it complicated so we get confused. But I'd recommend watching all the documentaries that I used. I'll leave links to them all below. And this barely scratches the surface. Why do you think they used reverse transcription? to prove the existence of a virus if they knew that it wasn't specific to viruses. I don't know. It's as simple as this. I don't know.